what a brilliant. Absolutely lovely to see you. Lovely to have Gary. Gary agreed to come and play. And then he brought some friends along with him. And so tonight's going to be a great treat for us. And one of the friends he brought, when he walked through the door, I thought, I haven't seen that man for years. Richard here. Richard and I used to be really good friends. Not that we fell out. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and it was probably 1998 was the last time that I was told. Isn't that amazing? And... Uh, and so it's great to have him here. So we're just going to do the same format as last time. And I uh, just want to hand over to Gary. So thank you. Good evening. Um, my name is Gary. And that is Richard. This is Kevin and Simon. And uh, we will hopefully provide some music for you this evening. Um, I don't know what the format is here. We sit? Do we sit? Yeah, we sit and listen. And you sit and listen. <laughs> this is, I, I was instructed to sing two songs that you, uh, you know, so we're going to sing them at the beginning and the end. And uh, the songs in between, yes, hopefully you can at least look semi interested. But this one, if you, you could join, join in with us, we're going to say it's an old hymn, All Creatures of Our God and King. So if that's familiar to you, please um, don't be afraid to. Open your mouths and, and to sing along. Uh, just let's give a, a, a short prayer. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity to come and to uh, to meet and to share with those people who you know and who love you, and those people who you're drawing close to yourself. And we ask God you be with us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <coughs>
be uh, loving to sing God, but we also love to talk to Him. And is there anything that folk would like me to pray for as, as we think about what it means to talk to God? Is there anything that folk would like to pray for? Just Mita. We won't have to pray for Mita. Mita's unwell at the minute, and Mita's in hospital. Anything else? I was talking to Mita's sister in law, and she was telling me she'd been today for all her scans. Right, Mita had been. Uh -huh. Okay. That's just the latest okay, bit of it. Okay, thank you. Okay, let, let's all pray together. <coughs> Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are the Lord and King. You're the Lord of all creation because you made everything that we can see and everything that we can touch and even the things that we cannot see. That you have made all things. And not only have you made everything, but you sustain everything. And that's why we can honestly say that you are Lord. Because you're the creator of all that we see and sustain everything that is around us. But you're also king because you rule over this world. Because not only have you made us, not only do you sustain us, but it's your decision that you send your son Jesus to come down to this earth to die on the cross so that you can indeed save us, so that we know what it is to have a relationship with you. So we sing that you are Lord, you are King, but you're also our Saviour and our friend. And so we ask you tonight that you'll be with me to. We were really sorry to hear that she'd gone into hospital. Lord, we were concerned to hear that she may have TB. And we want to thank you for the tests that she's received today. And we pray that as those results come back, that the doctors will know exactly how best to treat her. But as we prayed this morning, we pray that your healing hand may touch her and may heal her. And that, Father, you may restore her to full health. Again, be with her and minister to her. Help her to recognise your presence with her as she's lying in that bed in that isolated ward. Remind her that you love her and you care for her. Remind her that you promise that you will never leave her nor forsake her. Lord, just minister to her, we ask. But we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
gold sold in the streets of there I paved with gold Keep your hands on the plow i 
shine upon his precious skin. I will know my Savior when I come to him by the mark where the nails have There's the folk who organise their holidays and there's folk who just bring it. Lorraine and I actually love to organise our holidays. We love to think where we're going, uh, a plan what we might do when we get there. Whereas I have a big friend, Big Roy, who plays balls here, and Roy's hopeless. Roy never plans his holidays. He phoned me last week and he said, Do you want to go out for coffee? Uh, two weeks ago it was, Do you want to go out for coffee? And I said, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm busy tomorrow. He phoned me on the Wednesday. He says, "Want to go for coffee tomorrow, which was Thursday?" I says, "No, I'm sorry, I'm busy." He says, "That's okay." Ten minutes later, he texts to say, "We're going on a cruise tomorrow." Ten minutes later, that's how organised he is. Asked him, "Did he enjoy the cruise?" He said, "It was all right, nothing great." But people who don't organise their holiday, they can't complain whenever. The weather's not right because they've gone the wrong time of year. Or the food wasn't good because they don't like that local stuff. Or, or the culture's not right. Whenever we were in Thailand, uh, this happened quite often, uh, the wee Samra driver or the wee um, rickshaw drivers would come to our house and they would have a foreigner sitting, a foreigner meaning a westerner, sitting in the back of the rickshaw. And they would say to me, we've picked this person up at the, the bus station and we don't know where they want to go. Uh, and so I would go over to talk to them and they would be Italian or they would be French or they'd be German. And I would never clear what they're saying. So I would say to the Rexall driver, I have no idea where he wants to go. He says, what do you mean you have no idea where he wants to go? I said, well, I don't understand him. He says, what do you mean you don't understand him? I said, well, I can understand you, but I can't understand him. He says, but he's foreign and you're foreign. Surely you can understand it. They always thought there was just one language and that's foreign. Before we come to Thailand, planning to do uh, a trip around Thailand and we wouldn't have it organised. And what would happen is they would arrive in a wee place like Gampang Pet and when they arrived there, they'd realise they don't want to be there. They arrived and as soon as you arrive in a bus station in Thailand, you're flocked with some road drivers, right, road drivers to take you somewhere. And the wee guy or the wee girl wouldn't have it organised and they wouldn't know where to go and they'd potentially come and maybe stay with us a day or two or if they didn't like the look off them, we'd take them to a hotel. We only had one hotel in the time, we'd stay there instead. And they didn't really enjoy their experience. So that's somebody who doesn't organise, they come and when they get there they think, oh, I don't want to be there. And then we had an experience one time, someone phoned our roaches uh, and said, uh, I have a wee friend called Sam and Sam's going around the world and uh, he's going to some relations in Australia, but he's come to Thailand first, can he come to you for a few days? <coughs> and we said, yeah, we'll take Sam for a week. And so Sam was a wee joiner from Belfast, and uh, he came to us in Gampeng Pet, I picked him up at the bus station, and, and I showed him around Gampeng Pet, and we had a great time. And, uh, and Sam was then going on to Chiang Mai for a few days, and then he was going on to Australia for three months, and then he was going to San Francisco for some month. He had it all organised for a year. Uh, he had taken a year out work to, to do this. So after the week in Gamping Ped, and I showed him all around and, and was speaking to him, I said, now when you go to Chiang Mai, I need you to be careful. I said, what's going to happen? When you get to Chiang Mai, when you get to the bus station in Chiang Mai, there's lots of people in the bus station. 
and there's lovely girls and they will come up to you and say, I can show you a cheap place to live or I have a wee house that my granny has and, and you can rent that for a few days. Do not go with them. And I gave them the name of a, a wee guest house that we would use a place called Gilead Guest House. And I said, you just go to the Samuel driver, Rhoda and I, you give that to the Samuel driver and he will take you there. Do not go with anybody else. Yes, I understand that. Are you sure you understand it? I understand it. Away away, I thought I'd never see Sam again. Three days later, here he comes to the house. And when he first came to my house, three days or a week or so before this, he had a rucksack that would that would be the size of a mountain almost. He was a tiny wee boy and the rucksack was bigger than him. And uh, when he came back the second time, he had two arms the same length. And I said to him, Sam, what are you doing here? He says, Danny, Danny, I've left my passport here. I said, sorry? He says, I've left my passport here. I said, Sam, where's your rucksack? Well, I've left it in Chiang Mai. Who have you left it with? A lovely wee girl in Chiang Mai. He goes to Chiang Mai. A wee girl says, come on to my house. And uh, he's there the day. And she says, oh, your passport's missing. You better go down and get your passport. I said, Sam, you've lost your passport, you've lost your, your belongings, you've lost everything. He says, no, 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 when I go up to Chiang Mai, she'll be waiting for me. I said, when you go up to Chiang Mai, there'll be nobody there waiting for you. And so I had to take him down to Bangkok, and he went back home. <coughs> so the year that he was going around the world lasted about nine days, and he was back home again, because he lost his passport. So there was someone who organised his holiday, he had it all planned what he was going to do, but he was told certain things that if he wasn't careful, he could lose everything. And he didn't listen. And he lost everything. And I thought for a minute, that's a wee bit like life. You know, people, everybody I think in, in Northern Ireland would agree that, that life is like a journey. We're all going a journey. And, and in that journey, lots of good things happen. And lots of sad things happen. A lot of exciting things happen. And a lot of boring things happen. But we're all going on a journey. But where lots of people disagree is the role of death in that journey. For some people, death is at the end of the journey. In other words, what they say, that's the final destination. Final destination is death. But they're actually wrong with that. Because death has a role to play in our journey. But it's not the final destination. It plays something like the role of an airport. Because an airport is like... Whenever you're on a journey, you've gone one part, and then you're going somewhere totally different. So you go to the airport to go to that place, to somewhere different. And when you get to the airport, it's really important that you go to the right gate. And death is like an airport that has two gates. It's a gate to hell and a gate to heaven. And the secret is to be prepared, to know where you're going, because it would be awful. If we were like some of those wee French folk or, or, or Italian folk or German folk who arrive somewhere and think, that's not where I wanted to go. That's not the place I would want to be. That's not what I thought it was going to be like. It would be awful if that was the case. Or it would be awful if we were like Sam, we would say, well, we were told the way to get to heaven. We were told the best way to get there through trusting in Jesus but decided to do it my own way. I decided to do the way that I think is easier. And although I was told this, that, and the next thing, I decided to do it my way, as Frank Sinatra would do. Both we Sam and those other wee folk in holiday were really disappointed with Thailand. It wasn't what they thought it was, and it was because they weren't <coughs> organized. They hadn't thought what it was like. It would be terrible if we went to the airport of death and we recognised there was two gates and we actually hadn't planned and where we were going because the default in this airport is the default is always to where hell is and that would be awful if by not planning anything that we found in that place where we really want to be but the great thing is just as we've been hearing the songs is that when we have Jesus as our friend, when we know that who he is, and as we plan and organise our trip to heaven, the great thing is we can enjoy the journey on the way. Because, as I say, what I love about organising a holiday 
It's the things I'm going to do. And I always plan them and I think about them even before I do it. And that's part of the enjoyment of going on holiday. And people say, what, being a Christian? Surely that just means you go to heaven when you die and life's about boring before then. That's absolute nonsense. Being a Christian is having Jesus as your friend. And what that means is you really enjoy the journey to the airport and then it's even better beyond because of what Jesus has for us. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you've promised to give us life, life in all its fullness. And too often people think that life is all about one or two weeks in a year when it's a holiday and everything else is just really boring. And, and we tend to plan our lives away and, and we think, if only I wasn't working anymore. If only I could get retired. And then once we get retired, we think, if only we can do this or do that or do the next thing. And before we know it, our life on this earth is over. And we haven't planned for the future. Because too many people think that death is a terminal, terminus. Whereas in fact, hell is only a gateway. And we pray that each one of us here tonight might know that that gateway for us leads to heaven with you and it will be far better than Thailand it will be far better than Scotland it will be far better than Northern Ireland it will be far better than anything we've ever experienced here on earth speak to us we ask for we ask it in Jesus name Amen <coughs> So it should be. And it's talking about the fact that one day, if you know Jesus, you'll be able to go and spend eternity with him in heaven. And so we all pretend that we were maybe in a cafe. And so it's okay to uh, to make some, some noise. So if you fancy clapping or stomping your feet or responding in yes, a musical way, that would be good, or a non-musical way, um, you can join in.
It's from now on it's going to be G four M. Gary from eight that's your band name. Eh? <laughs> and uh, so thanks for coming. Really appreciate them coming. There's plenty of tea and coffee, so uh, help yourself so you don't have to feel yourself. Come on now, Lila, you don't have to rush away. It's good to see you. Thank you very much. Oh 